As a young radio announcer starting out in Indiana, I worked for a station that carried ABC News and Paul Harvey, and I began recording some of Harvey's broadcasts. I'm glad I saved this one. Let's go back to Christmas, 1965, a much younger Paul Harvey. I took the commercials out so it would fit on YouTube. Sorry about the sound quality. I think you'll love this. Merry Christmas from the Harveys and from Amway. Now then, Americans, the Christmas story, and I mean the God born in a manger and all that, escapes some moderns. Mostly, I think, because they seek complex answers to their questions, and this one is so utterly simple. So it is for the cynics now. It is for the skeptics. It is for the unconvinced that I wish to submit a modern parable. This is about a modern man. One of us. He was not a Scrooge now. He was a kind, a decent, a mostly good man. He was generous to his family, upright in his dealings with other men. But he did not believe in all that incarnation stuff which the churches proclaim at Christmas time. It just didn't make sense. And he was too honest to pretend otherwise. He just could not swallow the Jesus story about God coming to earth as a man. He told his wife, I am truly sorry to distress you, dear, but I am not going with you to church this Christmas Eve. I'd feel like a hypocrite. He said he'd rather stay home, but that he would wait up for them. He stayed, they went, to the midnight service. Shortly after the family drove away in the car, snow began to fall. He went to the window to watch the flurries getting heavier and heavier, and then he went back to his fireside chair and he began to read his newspaper. Minutes later, he was startled by a thudding sound. Then another, then another. At first, he thought someone must be throwing snowballs against his living room window. But when he went to the front door to investigate, he found a flock of birds huddled miserably in the snow. They had been caught in the storm and in a desperate search for shelter had tried to fly through his large landscape window. Well, he couldn't let the poor creatures lie there and freeze. So he remembered the barn where his children stabled their pony. That would provide a warm shelter if he could direct the birds to it. He quickly put on his coat and galoshes he tramped through the deepening snow to the barn. He opened the doors wide and turned on a light. But the birds did not come in. He figured food would entice them, so he hurried back to the house and fetched breadcrumbs, and he sprinkled the breadcrumbs on the snow, making a trail to the yellow-lighted, wide-open doorway of the stable. But to his dismay, the birds ignored the breadcrumbs. They continued to flop around helplessly in the snow. He ran after them, tried catching them. He tried shooing them into the barn by walking around them, waving his arms, but instead they scattered in every direction. Every direction except into the warm lighted barn. Then he realized that they were afraid of him. To them, he reasoned, I am a strange and terrifying creature. If only I could think of some way to let them know they can trust me, that I'm not trying to hurt them, but to help them. But how? Any move he made tended to frighten them, to confuse them. They just would not follow. And they would not be led or shooed because they feared him. If only I could be a bird myself, he thought. If only I could be a bird and mingle with them and speak their language and tell them not to be afraid and then show them the way to the safe, warm barn. But I'd have to be one of them so they could see and hear and understand. I'd have to be one of them. At that moment, the church bells began to ring, and the sound reached his ears above the sounds of the wind, and he stood there listening to the bells, Adeste Fidelis, listening to the bells pealing the glad tidings of Christmas, and he sank to his knees in the snow. Paul Harvey. 
Good night.